G'day, Liam Fitzpatrick here. Uh, I'm doing something a little different in this vlog. I'm not fishing, so gonna see if you like it. I'm just gonna run through the basic entry level stuff on how to catch brim on lures. Uh, I'm gonna do it as a couple part series, so today I'm just gonna focus on the setup basically, just rod reel, main line, leader. What you need to get out and get started chasing brim with lures, so. I'm going to try and talk fast, I'm going to try and pump as much information into this as I can. Well, I've been doing this stuff now for 20 odd years, so I figured I might as well share a few of the tricks I've picked up along the way. I started out in 2000 doing my first brim comp. Uh, it was the second year of the ABT brim stuff. Yeah, I did pretty well. I was leading day one and I think I come out in fourth place overall. Uh, one fish shy of a full bag, so it's pretty chuffed. Uh, love my brim fishing and I'm going to share it with you guys. So, First of all, going to do rods. Uh, basic entry level rod, what makes a good brim rod, what do you look for? For entry level, basic something like all rounder, would be a JML all rounder of course, but um, obviously I'm JML sponsored so I've got their products to show you. So yeah, so your basic entry level or beginner all round sort of rod in my opinion is going to be 7 foot, 7 foot 2 graphite rod. So the idea of an all rounder rod. Um, is just going to be that standard fast taper, not extra fast, not extra slow, medium, none of that sort of stuff. What's a taper? Alright, so tapers the action of the rod, the way the rod loads. So a slow taper rod, the whole rod is going to load up. Fast taper rod is just going to be that tip section. Why do you use different tapered rods? Well, I can go into that in more depth in the next couple of series of logs I'll do. That's what I'd go for. Two to four kilo. Fast taper, seven foot, uh, it's gonna lead to your plastics, your hards, your surface, your vibes, all that sort of stuff. There are better options for specific techniques, but that's gonna get you out there, it's gonna get you fishing. The other rod I do have here, just to give you an idea on what an extra fast taper is, something that just loads up right in the tip section. You know, that's great for fishing bio baits, your brim prawns, maracu crab, stuff like that. I love fishing that. So that's rods, that's your basic, I need a rod, I'm going brim fishing, grab it. 7 foot 2, 7 foot, graphite rod, fast taper, 2 to 4 kilo, 4 to 10 pound. You know, you can pick up a rod like that quite cheap these days. You know, there's some combos and some setups will go for 100 bucks. You know, the rod, you can pick up a rod for about 60 bucks. Full graphite, 2 to 4 kilo, 7 foot, perfect to just get out there and start doing it. Alright, moving on from rods, you've got reels. Obviously another crucial part of the system. Uh, what reel do I pick? What do I go for? Why am I using it? You know, well, back when I started, like, that was my first brim reel. That's a little dial, a capri. It's uh, pretty old and squeaky now. But um, yeah, used to think brim, small, light lures, tiny stuff, had to go small. You know, a lot of guys in the scene on the tournament circuit, they were fishing thousands, 1,000 size reels, really tiny. Not really beneficial as we progressively move forward and we, and we learn. You know, you're trying to cast out a 20, 30 meter cast and trying to dig line out that's halfway down that spool. You know, that light lure, it's only got so much momentum. It's got to pull that much line off to keep going, to get all that line out from deep in that spool to get that maximum distance. We figured out pretty quick that thousands weren't ideal. Um, you know, guys went, ooh, what's the best reel I can buy on the market? Well, at the time, it was a Stratic. Um, Stratic's original reels, they were all designed for monofilament. So they like, laid that line like rope on a barrel, you know, side by side. You start bringing in a bit of loose line, um, fishing in the wind, light weights. Next thing that happened, those loops pull that light line off from under each other and you end up with what we call a stratic ball back in the day. Quite often you'd see dudes with a couple of reels on the deck with just big bunches of grapes. So after that, we sort of moved forward, went to 2,000, 2,500 size reels. Uh, the other benefit of that, having something that's a bit bigger, is yeah, that line's not having to dig itself out from under, you know, all the line on top of it to get your maximum distance in cast. Also, when it came to retrieval rates and cranking power, getting line back on that reel as quick as you could. You know, you got a big brim, pulling string, you want to get as much line back when you can, so we progressed away from that real small stuff. Now, what I'd suggest, ideally, you want to go out, you want to get it started, 2,000, 2,500 size reel. Perfect. Ideal for any of that light brim, lure, plastic, hard body stuff, perfect. That's the sort of reel I'd be looking towards. The other option that we had that came along and uh, is still pretty uh, pretty popular is just the shallow spool stuff. You know, great for really light finesse PE, really good for um, spinning fluoro as well. You know, you can redo a whole spool with spinning fluoro 
it, it wears and tears a little worse than what braid does so you know if you get a few nicks or a bit of memory or something in the line you know it's quick and easy to rip off a whole spool of uh, fluoro and top shot you want to run out you want to get your first brim combo two two and a half thousand size reel ideal uh, yeah, from there we're going to go into lines uh, main lines basically so so with your reels you know, since the, the early days and the oscillation with the various reels yeah we now have a cross wrap system where the braid is cross wrapped you got a faster oscillation so that spool's going up and down quicker laying the line more across itself so as it's coming off you don't get as much of it coming under and pulling off loose uh, loose wraps of line in front of itself yeah most of the reels in the market these days are running that sort of system so it's basically just price point um you know grab what you can afford uh, you don't need to have a stellar to get out there and catch you know multiple brim so just grab what you can afford best way to go about it so once you've got your rod your reel you're going to need some line um, your best bet is going to be a braided line you're going to get a lot of feel you're going to be able to tell what's going on you are going to encounter little hiccups along the way we've all done it everyone will uh, you're going to have to learn some knots uh, beauty of it is nowadays you've got some better knots to learn back in the day we had just basic all brights and we were doing bimini twists to all brights to bulk up the braid coming into the system and you know as it's progressed you know you've now got fg knots which are just there's nothing else i would tie these days so if you want to learn the best knot go straight to fgs if i had a video for one i'd do a little check out my vid on how to tie an fg but i haven't done that yet so um, there's plenty of videos out there you can google for that so a gel spun line is multiple strands of braid spun together and fused so it's going to have a little bit of memory which actually allows it to fall off the spool quite easily which aids in distance and casting you're going to have a few less dramas with wind knots and things like that you know just the basic sort of stuff that you, you're going to encounter so as you can see that comes off it's got a few little coils so the braid i got here like that's a uh, yamatoyo resin sheller great entry beginner sort of braid great for the you know the pro guys too like uh, i run that on all my reels that's one of my deep up and down sort of reels so i've got the smoke color on there but for your casting i'd run a fluoro run the orange or something like that so you can see what's going on with it uh, yeah, that's another point too with uh, with your braided lines. It is good to be able to see what's going on. So you've got your whites, your fluoros, orange and pinks, and your darker colours like your smokes and things like that, all have an application. The main thing I would say is get something bright because you're going to be casting, you're going to be doing a lot of visual sort of stuff. So you want to see that line move. Uh, if you can see the line, a uh, official grab, you'll just see that little tick, or you'll just see a little twitch in that line best way to be able to get a fish bite or, or a hook set is just watch that line you'll see that line tick and then set the hook so a line you can see is going to be probably the most beneficial um, to a beginner so yeah so your other option in lines is going to be a PE uh, which is a polyethylene uh, it's, it's basically multiple strands braided together um, it's a lot rounder it's a lot thinner for its breaking strain uh, it's got a tiny diameter so it's a really good line if you are used to using braids uh, you don't want to be starting off with something like that you know if you get a little catch or a knot or you can cast and it'll pop you know it's you really want to be on the ball using something like that uh, that's why i'm going to sort of suggest you go down the path of the gel spun line um, heap them on the market you know you don't have to pay hundreds of dollars for, uh, for your first bit of braid to go on your spool um, there's a heap of little entry level sort of spools kicking around so just grab yourself a bit of fuse stuff a bit of gel spun and yeah, you'll be laughing. Yeah, once you've got braid on your reel, reel on your rod, yeah, you just need some leader. Um, fluorocarbon, the way to go. Uh, it's designed to reflect the colours in its environment, so it almost turns invisible. You know, if it's over a sandy bottom, it reflects that sort of yellowy sandy colour, uh, which basically makes it an invisible line. It's got a harder outer coating, so it's really good for abrasion resistance, um, holds really well in knots. It's got a little bit of stretch. Uh, it's a lot stretch than monofilament, so uh, running appropriate leader lengths is uh, is one of the keys. Uh, if you're doing stuff like surface and things, you can go a, a standard mono so that the mono floats. It helps keep your little surface walkers up on the surface. But you know, I'll touch on that more when I do the next one about lures and how to fish different stuff. So again, back in the day when we first started, we'd time big bulky all brights or dirty old unis uni to uni um, yeah massive knots coming through your guides you never run a leader any longer than your rod because if that uh, that knot got on the reel your next loop of braid is going to catch on that knot and you go to cast and it just cactus it's just ridiculous the introduction of that fg knot 
Um, I can run lead at twice the length of the rod now. You know, if I'm fishing something where I want a bit more shock absorption, I can run an extra long leader. That FG you knot doesn't catch. It, it'll lay on the reel without any, any drama. So it allows you to do a hell of a lot more. So that's basically how to get started, brim fishing with lures. That's your entry level, basic, what you need, in my opinion, to get you going 100%. Seven foot, seven foot two, graphite rod, um, 2,000, two and a half thousand size spin reel, some gel spun braid, um, fluorocarbon leader. Like it's, it's available at every tackle shop. Brim fishing on lures has just blown up over the years. Like I was around when it was just kicking off, you know, all those first comps were just starting and it was just progressing year after year. And yeah, where we're at today, like brim fishing, it's national. Like you've got brim all around the coast of Australia. You've got pikeys in the north, blacks down south and yellowfin, you know, on the east and west. All of this stuff too is going to translate and adapt to so much light finesse style fishing. So if you've got trout in your local creek or redfin down south or JPs and sooties up north, this exact setup style of fishing just catches all that stuff. If any of that small presentation finesse style fishing, you know, you start off with brim or whatever you've got in your local area and it's just going to help you fish and move up and progress through all other aspects of fishing. Master this light finesse stuff and you're just going to go places. It's The next step up is just heavier and bigger. You're still doing the same sort of thing. You're still fishing the same sort of way. You've just beefed it up a notch. And all the stuff you learn along the way doing this, it's just going to give you confidence to do any style of fishing you want, any species you want, and uh, you just catch. Like it's, it's not hard. I've always sort of struggled to think, why do I catch when other people don't or you know I don't want to say like oh there's dudes out there that are just better than others I honestly don't think there are I think there's people that are more experienced and more confident you know and I'm, in this series of logs I'm hopefully gonna you know I can't give you experience you're gonna have to get out there and earn that yourself but hopefully I can give you the confidence that anyone can do it it is not hard it's it's catching fish just practice makes perfect Knowing the right tools and the right tricks are going to be a benefit to you, but just get out there, be confident. Anyone can do this. You know, that's, that's your basic setup. That's your how to catch brim on lures. This is part one. Keep an eye out for part two. I'll uh, go into it a bit more in depth and get you on the right track. If you like that, uh, subscribe to my channel. You know, cheers for watching. Uh, yeah, get out and catch something. Cheers.